Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending upon where you're located. I'd like to welcome you to the latest of Hitachi's webinar series, Creating an End-to-End -end Solution for Electron Microscopy, Visualization, and Analysis. This webinar is brought to you today by Media Cybernetics and Hitachi. This webinar will be presented by subject matter experts including Jamil J. Clark and Jeff Knight. Mr. Jamil J. Clark is currently a Senior Applications Engineer with the Nanotechnology Systems Division of Hitachi High Tech America Incorporated, residing in Hillsborough, Oregon. In his current role, he is responsible for supporting North and South America, providing technical expertise, applications development, and collaborating with researchers in several nanotechnology-related fields. His interests include FibSem systems development, broad ion beam and focused ion beam applications, and advanced automated image processing. Mr. Jeff Knipe is the Special Projects Product Manager for Media Cybernetics. In his current role, he is involved with developing new applications, product development, and product training. His background includes developing solutions for biological, materials, semiconductor, and inspection fields. Before we get started with today's webinar, I'd like to handle a few of the logistics. You, this is how to use the control panel, which you'll see in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. You can show and hide the control panel by clicking this arrow. Select your audio, phone call, or speakers on your computer. Click phone call to see the number. All attendees will be muted during this webinar. When you have questions, whenever they should come up during the webinar, please type your questions in the question box. We will take questions and answers at the end of this webinar. With that, I'd like to introduce Mr. Jamil J. Clark. Thank you. Oh, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is uh, Jamil Clark with Hitachi, and I will be uh, co-hosting this webinar uh, with uh, Jeff Knight, if you can say hello. Hello, and thank you for attending today. So today's discussion is going to uh, revolve about uh, creating an end-to-end -end solution for electron microscopy and visualization and analysis. For our agenda, we'll discuss who we are, and that will also encompass a company overview, and the partnership that we have together in order to provide an end-to-end -end solution for your workflow or application. Uh, following that, uh, the main subject of the webinar will be just to kind of give you a highlight and overview of several different kinds of solutions that can be applied uh, with what we're going to discuss today, and then the kind of products that actually fit with that uh, with its given configuration. Finally, we'll uh, wrap up, and then if there are any questions, uh, we are more than welcome to try and answer that during this webinar session. All right. Uh, let me, again, my name is Jeff Knipe, uh, Special Products Manager for Media Cybernetics, and I'd like to talk uh, just briefly about Media Cybernetics. We developed the Image Pro image analysis software platform. Um, as you can see, there are quite a number of image analysis solutions that we provide, things from ranging from manual measurements for maybe doing trench analysis in semiconductor, particle size analysis, and we'll go through some of these examples later today particle characterization, semiconductor, uh, you know, quality assurance, research failure analysis, I mean, looking at ball grid arrays, fiber analysis for electrospun um, fiber materials, to, as you can see on the image on the right, FibSem, we're looking at 3D volume rendering and analysis, and all those the range of biological and nanomaterials. For more information, you can access our website at mediaside.com. Uh, next page. So, I'll talk a little bit about the Image Pro fa family. So, Image Pro consists of Image Pro with a set of basic features, which is included with uh, Hitachi systems going out in the Americas. And this includes image processing, image pre-processing, filtering, manual 2D analysis, where you're taking me measurements, where you're defining the region of interest or point to point being able to generate reports. This also includes a special feature, uh, a send to image pro button 
a number of SEMs or TMs to actually send the image directly into Image Pro. And then there's the Image Pro Advanced features, um, which is a separate edition, which includes automated analysis, automated 2D analysis, and from a segmentation standpoint, identifying your objects, objects of interest, machine learning based classification, or I should say identification of your materials or objects and classification, batch processing, because many times you're, not, you're analyzing more than a single image, and custom reporting of the data. In addition to expand the capability, we also have modules, in this case a 3D visualization analysis module, which you'll see a little bit more of later today, that includes volume rendering, 3D analysis, both automated and manual, and movie making. And another module is big data visualization for when you have FIBSEM image stacks that are in the terabyte range, larger than you can visualize. Uh, this is a uh, module we have for being able to convert that data set into a visual uh, form you can visualize on your computer, on standard computers. And we also have a series of apps or applications for such things as fiber thickness and orientation, which you'll see, fiber separation, and inter intermetallic corrosion in semiconductor. Uh, next page, please. Well, thank you, Jeff. Uh, so as far as Hitachi, for those who don't know, I'm part of uh, Hitachi High Tech America. Our uh, company was founded in 1910. And uh, from there, we've been a pioneer in the development and supply of uh, scientific instrumentation and medical systems um, and bio-related pro uh, products as well as industrial equipment. So for our professionals, uh, we make co contributions of lasting significance for customers through concentration on innovative design, utilization of the world's most advanced technologies, comprehensive marketing, and versatile sales and service experience. Our employees work to deliver a brand of products and services that meet or exceed customer expectations in terms of value, reputation, and dependability. At Hitachi, our culture embraces partnerships with leading universities, research facilities, and companies worldwide. Partnerships directed toward providing you, the customer, with superior quality products and services at fair and competitive prices. So that leads me to a little bit of history here as far as our first commercial uh, TEM. Um, so this was uh, had a range of 5 to 10 nanometers and can operate at 50 kV. Uh, ever since then, we've uh, commercialized the first SEM, the HSM2, in 1970. And what is uh, very special and near and dear to our core technology was the first commercialized cold FESEM, the HFS-2, in 1971, which was able to obtain, shockingly at that time, three nanometers at 30 kB. So for Hitachi High Tech America, evolving technology in the field of electron and ion mic microscopy uh, is for the betterment uh, of all of us, especially the community as a whole. And given the partnerships that we've had through the years, it was actually led uh, with one key person uh, who is the cornerstone for, for microscopy, and that would be Professor Albert Crew, one of the youngest and brightest professors that was uh, obtained a position as director at Argonne National Lab. Hitachi and Dr. Crew have collaborated in order to develop the first field emission uh, electron microscope. At that time, and being so young, everyone in the field was very, very doubtful that field emission, quote unquote, could actually break through in order to get to nano, nanometer scale imaging. But it was this kind of collaboration that really set the hallmark of what Hitachi represents for all the products that followed up until today. So I encourage all of you that to let you know that we are very, very open in order to develop new ideas, new designs, and new technologies so we can work together and have an answer to those challenging questions uh, that pose us now. So with that said, let's get started. Uh, 
So ImagePro for Hitachi Systems is a collaboration between Media Cybernetics and, and us, Hitachi. And the idea behind this is really to provide a meaningful and easy way to do image processing. Uh, for those who know, electron microscopy is very, very useful as a tool to provide analysis, have multiple detectors uh, in order to obtain different kinds of measurements uh, in situ. And those tend to lead in the applications such as metallurgy, ceramics, powders, composites, advanced materials, um, a lot of polymer chemistry these days especially, as well as uh, uh, bioscience. But the fact is, is that just with the electron microscope itself, it's great at generating data. What we need to do is tie it together. Um, and that's where Jeff will talk a little bit about how that is offered here um, on this slide. Excuse me. So as, as Julia mentioned, um, there was a very close partnership. And, and one of the things we did mention is the connection between um, sending images directly into ImagePro. And so again, try and provide a range of solutions, again, for a broad range of materials, um, applications, um, this allows us to, you know, process process the data. We're automatically reading in the calibration, so everything's automatically calibrated in the right units. And then to obtain, and we'll see in the examples uh, forthcoming, the range of measurements that you can use to characterize your materials or actually to do classification, because there's very some very sophisticated sophisticated classification techniques available with an image pro and then once you have all that of course being able to report out the data make it available make it available for presentations with a range of you know bar charts pie charts and histograms including the images or actually having the measurements overlaid on the image for you know documentation purposes and presentation uh, next slide please right so you know there's lots of different softwares available um, out there that can complement the electron microscope. But just to show you how easy it is, even for the most simple tool, uh, Media Cybernetics Image Pro software is actually very, very nice and has lots of different kinds of measurement tools. And here is just a few uh, just to kind of show you here for uh, just doing manual measurements. Uh, I know some people tend to refer to free software, open source software, things like that in order just to do circles and lines uh, uh, and just grab a quick measurement or even on screen with their uh, very own uh, EM GUI controlling software. And there's so much more uh, that's available but yet still very easy to use. So in this example, uh, if you look at the image here on the right, it's a DRAM chip. Uh, I went ahead and sectioned this by the uh, Hitachi Ethos NX5000 SIBSEM um, top down in order to get more of a profile along these uh, long, tall DIA structures uh, that are there. And what I would like to show you is just a couple simple different ways of how to measure this. So here I have the screen. This is uh, Image Pro. And there's several tabs at the top that simply enough we just want to measure. So. Here, there's our circle tool. We see circle structures on the micrograph. So let's try the circle tool. You know, for most people, this would uh, tend to be the first kind of tool that you would go to. So what we can do is zoom in. Let's find a region of interest. And then we can click right on this corner here. Get that. And then try and draw a circle in order to measure it. Now, obviously, in reality, it is not as circular as this uh, circle function would be. So let's try the ellipse tool instead. And for this, this is going to give us a, a much closer measurement. And you can see the value on the bottom left. Uh, it will show you the area for that instantly. But one of my favorite tools is the auto trace uh, polygon. Very, very flexible tool. You see the menu. Uh, for different properties uh, pop up on the right side. But you simply click once, you click twice, and it'll automatically gravitate towards that contrast edge. Now I'll do the outside. 
click once, click twice, and then it'll auto trace. And this will give us a much more granular measurement that we can go by. Now I'll just go ahead and pull up the measurement table here. And we can see all of our different measurement objects, plus the more we process on this image, the more of uh, the values will generate for the mean standard deviation, minimum, max, things like that. Uh, on the types, there's different types of measurement uh, variables that are available. So I'll just scroll down here so you can kind of see the extensive list. There's so much more, but right now, since we're working on circular structures, um, we already selected the area, uh, so let's see what else we can click here. Okay, we'll try that for the uh, region diameter, and let's go with the diameter mean. So once I double-click those, it'll be in the list, and as soon as I collapse the menu, they instantly populate. And that's one of the nice things if you have multiple objects. You don't have to redraw those measurements. You can just simply select the measurement type and have it all in the same software, same interface. Um, another one here. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Jamil. Oh, no, no. Please feel free. Okay. Sorry. So just giving another example of some of the tools available for the manual measurements. As you can see, there's a range of manual measurements direct. We can do all max snapped edges. But in this example, coating thicknesses, layer coatings. I mean, it could be, um, this is a coated material, but it could be thermal spray coating, coatings on, for example, a stent. Um, we do work with um, paint manufacturers, different coatings where they're taking cross sections and looking at different layer thicknesses. Um, so in this case, if you would start the movie, feature called incremental distance. This is the example. There's a couple of ways of doing this, but in, in, in this form, it's simply defining a layer, define the, 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 the edge of it, and define the second edge. And what this will do through this feature called incremental distance, I can choose the sampling of how often I want to take a sample across that particular coating. It'll automatically generate mean, max, min, and standard deviation. So I can choose how, how I'm sampling it across. Again, then I can do multiple layers, but it's a very nice and efficient way of doing coating or layer thickness using the tools, using the basic tools in this case built right into ImagePro. Uh, next page. So on this one is the, uh, he talked about the layer thickness measurement, <clears throat> but as a different example, especially for fabricated structures, uh, we could do line profiling as well. So instead of uh, measuring the two edges in contrast line uh, in order to find a thickness, it could be simply just the interface themselves, uh, and that's what this provides. In addition to that, uh, we can do point to point. Uh, there's your simple uh, line measurements. Of course, I showed you the auto trace polygon, but of course, manual uh, tracing for the polygon in order to obtain area, intensity, width, height, roundness, diameter, volume, things like that. And uh, things such as uh, circuit boards or uh, infiltrated composite materials with glass fibers, then you have the circle measurements as well. So the idea here is that, you know, there's a multitude of different ways that can, uh, uh, to take a micrograph and measure it, depending on the kind of application that you have. So, of course, ImagePro does provide these kinds of basic measurement tools. Moving on to some of the more advanced features, 2D automated analysis. And there's a range of capabilities here. And you'll see the outcome of this in a moment. As I mentioned, machine learning. This is another methodology for segmenting or identifying your objects or areas of interest. Instead of a straightforward intensity thresholding and segmentation to define the areas you want to measure, with machine learning we're training ImagePro to recognize your objects from the background. And it could be uh, different types of objects, but in this case simply defining your object 
and the background to automatically segment your objects of interest. The beauty of this and the real importance of this is it really leads to a much more robust identification of what you're trying to measure, where it becomes invariant to different shading. If you have some shading across your, exam, uh, your sample, for instance, uh, and that may be changing as you're acquiring from different locations on your material, the thing about um, machine learning is you can train it to recognize only those areas where you run into problems with intensity thresholding. What's also really important about machine learning is you can train off of multiple images because one image may not be uh, representative of your whole experiment and some of the different imaging conditions you may see. But being able to train off of multiple images, you can then build that recipe in machine learning to be able to properly identify a measure across multiple images, and that's the, really the importance and the power of machine learning. Once you've identified your, your objects or your areas of interest, in this case these are ceramic particles, characterization. There's hundreds and hundreds of parameters that you can just, you know, area and diameter is a, a simple example that you can use to characterize your, your sample, whether, whether it's texture-based, morphological based or intensity based. There's a range of parameters again that you can then report those out for each and every object. In addition and importantly there's a whole range of classification uh, available to you from a very straightforward I want to do a size distribution analysis. I want to classify by a single parameter, a single measurement type for example area or in this case maybe roundness. They've already segmented, but I really, for a particular SOP or a particular workflow, I want to know the distribution analysis of my particles. And it's very easy to set up, that you can repeat, repeat that over and over again as a standard, standard operating procedure, that you're doing a QA, that I want to report the distribution of my particles by size and setting up those bin ranges. As I mentioned, machine learning is useful in, in training image to, to recognize what you want to measure, but it can also be used in classification, especially if you have different classes of objects that are very similar in their properties, maybe same size, but they have slightly different perimeters, slightly different edges, maybe slightly different textures. In this case, you can use machine learning to actually create a feature called learning classification that you can use machine learning to train the software to recognize these different categories, which would be possible to do by a single parameter, single measurement type. So again, this is a sophisticated machine learning to simplify your classification and make it very robust. Again, you can train off of multiple images to generate that recipe to classify your objects of interest. And again, once you've done that, um, this can put into an automation routine where you can batch process because usually sometimes it's a one-off, but if you're processing multiple images from a sample, you can set up to do an automatic routine to process it tends to hundreds or thousands of images and generate all that data and then accumulate all the data right with Image Pro that we can accumulate that instead of having to export for each image, but we can keep the statistics from each, images, each image and then combine that and report out the statistic, statistical analysis um, result from analyzing multiple images. Uh, next page, please. So for the Advance on uh, 3D visualization, there's also 3D measurement. Um, earlier I talked about 2D tools, you know, lines, circles, polygons, things like that. Uh, Image Pro, what's really nice is that you don't have to relearn a new software, a different interface. It's the same software, it's the same interface, and things are a lot more straightforward. So essentially the same action that's done in order to produce a line measurement or a circular measurement. Uh, those same techniques can be applied but in 3D space instead. And that's what the, uh, this shows here. Uh, you can even take a 3D uh, flight series segmentation set, and we'll have an example to show in a, uh, in a bit later on uh, with that. But you can still use a 2D space even though it's a 3D data set. And that makes things a lot faster. Uh, a lot more straightforward in order to manage the different uh, measured objects uh, while you're observing on, on the software. Um, and then here on this data tree, if you look at the 3D view, it's a very, very straightforward uh, tree that goes from a priority top to uh, least minimum bottom as far as its order and it's, you can click and drag 
in order to have either an ISO surface of a, a particular segmented object as the priority or not. For the Video Studio, this is also incorporated into the 3D plugin of Image Pro. So that way you can take your 3D object and record that so that way it's presentable either to your other colleagues or for upper management for reporting cases. Uh, what's uh, quite useful is that they're non-proprietary uh, formats so you can produce as a, you know, any kind of Windows uh, type of codec, whether it be WMV or AVI. Or, of course, the traditional MPEG or, M or MP4 uh, compressible type format. Um, what's uh, really nice about this, too, is when I use this to process my, my 3D series set, oftentimes generated from the FIPSEM, uh, and I have a certain motion, pan, and zoom that I would like to uh, produce, those motions can actually be saved independently of the movie. So if you have different data sets, you don't have to start from scratch. You can use those same motion sets that are saved and then apply that to a different data set to give you a very similar rendering uh, when you do your movie. So the reporting and sharing. <clears throat> There's lots of quick uh, reports, um, and they are exportable to several different kinds of formats. Uh, here you can see that there are uh, MS Office friendly. Uh, of course, you could keep it in the Image Pro format itself. Uh, should you have a network license or expand to multiple licenses in your lab, PDF as well, which is quite friendly for email and HTML. Uh, there are customizable templates. Um, so essentially, you can import all the data, generate the data, analyze it, measure it, and then click a button to. Uh, lay everything out into a proper format uh, quite easily uh, using this software. Especially when dealing with multiple data sets or large data sets, uh, it, it gets pretty challenging in order to, uh, to summarize all of that information into one page. And the uh, quick reports really, really do help in order to uh, tabulate that information. So that leads me to the variable pressure models um, on the left side we have the tabletop 4000 we also have the flex m 1000 so these are our uh, how should i say friendly systems uh, for people who are just starting out in em uh, or electron microscopy or first time users especially uh, when it comes to uh, graduate or undergraduate level uh, type of work these uh, machines have been uh, very uh, very popular in, in those types of fields Plus, they're very portable as well for those kinds of applications that require mobility, uh, especially for oceanographic types of uh, applications. Uh, but for those who are into uh, bulky, non-conductive, geological, or even metallurgical types of applications, the SU-3800 or the SU-3900 large chamber front opening variable pressure type of tungsten tool uh, would be much more suitable uh, for that kind of work. And then, of course, for those who actually need nanometer scale imaging, but yet still carry variable pressure type of capability, the SU-5000 and the SU-7000, uh, which can do uh, 7 nanometer or even just a couple nanometer type of imaging resolution compared to the tungsten tool, kind of open up and broaden the application for EDSD, EDS, WDS, CL work, uh, STEM imaging as well, not just secondary or backscatter. Uh, but lots of other different kinds of signals. So, you know, some of the following examples are going to uh, show you know, how that applies. And uh, Jeff, did you want to talk about this for a little bit? Actually, why don't we skip over this because we've, we've gone through it in, in the other slide. Okay, sure. Yep. So, Example of an application or an app. Uh, this is electrospun material. And again, with a simple setup, go ahead and start playing. With a simple setup, and this handles, you know, bright fire versus on dark background and reverse, it can handle second electron or backscatter. But by following a simple setup, it's easily to identify your fibers, 
go through choice and now here it's finding um, the thing is the fibers again having that statistical information where we can report again to also batch process min mean max standard deviation so you can characterize your fibers this will also report fiber orientation again with the, the various displays as you're characterizing your manufactured materials you can then come in and take a, a little bit of a deeper analysis about those materials and their characteristics um, you know from the manufacturing process and then doing the QA uh, next slide as we talked about ceramic particles about machine learning here's a, a very straightforward example um, of showing how machine learning works and how how this can be used uh, go ahead and start if you would please We're simply using, we call it smart segmentation, but this is machine learning where we can come in and train off of an image or multiple images to identify your, in this case, the ceramic particles of interest. We can simply define those. We're training it, defining the background, and then with a little bit of cleanup, we can do this. Again, this is really great if you have a little, some variations, some shading. We count, we find all of our particles, and you know, if this is what you're doing at this level, this would be fine. But in this case, if you want to characterize your particles, this is where we call it a single parameter classification. We can set up a size range that you're doing some standard SOP in a quality assurance process. We are pulling a sample every so often, and then you can report out those statistics. So it's really nice in the building capabilities. It's not just how many particles in each class, but we can also get the statistics so you can take a deeper look at what's actually occurring in that material. Again, we, we have different views that you can actually report out and then put into report into a PowerPoint um, the results of your image analysis or results of that experiment or of that QA process. Uh, next slide, please. So, you know, those are a few typical kinds of examples that you would see on that class of uh, electron microscopes, whether it's a field emission, nanometer scale kind of imaging, or even variable pressure side for non-conductive material. Uh, but how about if we take a look at FIB SIMS as well? So here, uh, just to kind of give you uh, an idea of the different ranges of FIB SIMS that Hitachi offers, we have the NX2000, which is a 200 millimeter uh, wafer capable FIB SIM. Uh, there's the NX5000 or the Ethos NX5000. This is our latest generation uh, large chamber FIPS. Um, it's actually designed in order to accommodate different kinds of uh, devices, detectors, uh, but having a very tall uh, main chamber which can be retrofitted or equipped with a cold stage, cryo stage, uh, air protection, um, as well as EDF, EBSD, lift-out system, multiple gas injections, uh, and as a two-column or a, or a three-column uh, type of FIPS uh, In fact, all three of them can be either a two-column or a three-column uh, type of FIPS And then for those uh, that are into uh, dedicated uh, series sectioning, uh, which tends to be uh, a bit more in the advanced materials and the biological uh, side for, you know, SBS based applications, or should I say serial block tapes uh, type of imaging, that's the NX9000. Uh, for this, we have both columns, which are 90 degrees apart or orthogonal, and that helps to alleviate those typical V-shaped uh, artifacts that tend to occur when it comes to slicing and imaging um, by keeping the E being normal incidence to the imaging plane. So there's no shadowing effects. You don't have the foreshortening to, to deal with. Or uh, sometimes you end up with the electron trap, and uh, you have a very poor signal to noise when it comes to imaging and detecting as you're slicing in a large trench uh, across your, your bulk sample. So the NX9000 tends to take care of that. But the fact is, is that you know most people tend to correlate segmentation with tips and which is great and image pro is compatible in a 3d sense to that but it can also handle 2d applications so for an example of fibsem using the nx5000 what you want to see is is a root tip and looking at plant cells for a biological example and so in this case we're going to really highlight 
the major three capabilities when you're doing FIBSIM and want to analyze that data. If you go ahead and start, please. So this is a FIBSIM, so we have that those planes, that serial block place, as you can see as we're going through this in Cali again, Calibrate, but this shows also the moving making capability and having the different views so you can look inside your material with these different clipping planes. And then being able to segment and identify, in this case, the cells in, in the plant root tip and then doing that analysis. But it really gives you the power to look in deep inside your sample by using FibSEM and seeing those structures. And there's a number of examples we're looking at a NAND memory block, being able to look deep inside that material into that device and seeing how things are spatially aligned and um, or if you're looking for defects, quality assurance. But again, this just shows and highlights being able to take that stack, generate your 3D rendered volume, do your analysis and then make a movie for, again, presentations, um, whatever you need that movie for, but to demonstrate that particular experiment. Uh, next slide. So the fact remains is that with ImagePro and Hitachi, you know, there's numerous types of different applications more than what we can show you now. It's really just to highlight the capability of bringing these two technologies together. Whether you have um, a variable pressure SEM, um, a field emission SEM, a fib SEM, or even TEM or SEM uh, type of microscope, all of these things are uh, auto calibrated and uh, can interface with ImagePro. Uh, the other thing, if you haven't picked up uh, during this webinar, is the fact that we can process images, measure those images, and represent that data in a, uh, a visual format, whether it's a bar chart uh, or if it's just uh, outputting statistics. And it's all the same software. It's all the same interface. Um, I've encountered a lot of different uh, labs and, and researchers that tend to use one software for one particular aspect and a different software for another aspect. ImagePro gives you all of that capability all in one interface. So that way, you only need to learn one type of software and you're done. So again, this is just to highlight one of the few technologies that we have. Uh, but we are going virtual this year at M&M, uh, M&M 2020. So uh, please join us so that way we can uh, discuss and show you other additional products, technologies, and platforms that we have. Thank you very much. Jeff, any uh, closing comments there? Thank you for joining us today. Again, as, as Jill, Jamil has mentioned, this is just a highlight of some of the capabil capability available to provide those end-to-end -end solutions uh, to meet a wide range of needs. Thank you, Jamil, and thank you, Jeff. That was a very informative webinar. Um, I'm looking at some of these questions here for you. And first off, let me say thanks again, Jamil, for reminding everybody that we will be attending m and and please do come and join us at our virtual booth. Um, with regards to the questions, looks like you folks did a pretty good job answering everything. I have one that is about, let's see, we have, a few more have come in. Um, can you provide a manual for machine learning in ImagePro and what version needs to be for this function? It's one of the questions. Um, it is documented in the manual um, that comes within the user guide. There are also some online webinars on our website of going through uh, setting up and using uh, smart segmentation. And um, I'm sorry, I, I blanked on the last part of that. My apologies. Uh, the um, what version, that, what version oh, needs to be right. this function? Um, Smart segmentation first came into the ImagePro family with ImagePro Premier 9.0, which goes back a number of years ago, at least uh, five or six, I believe. Sorry for for the time frame. Um, is currently in in 
Image Pro version 10, which is what we're showing, what these movies were made from and all the other capability. And it certainly evolved over the years in the capability from its first iterations as we've added increased capability to it to um, handle a range of image analysis or image segmentation conditions um, to do that. But it, it's... It, yeah, it's been around since Image Pro Premiere 9 and through the Premiere series and now and can you, continues to be available now in the current version, Image Pro version 10. It is not available in the older Image Pro Plus. All right, great. Thanks, Jeff. Um, I see another one that would probably apply to you. Does Image Pro have 21 CFR Part 11 compliance? We have some capability to it as something that is actively under discussion, um, how do I want to say this? Uh, currently, no, we do have digital signatures in audit trails, but uh, we've had those requests for being 21, 21 CFR Part 11 compliant or enabling that compliance tied into systems that are not fully under control, but that that is, um, well, I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> If you'd like to contact me offline, that would be great. Okay, great. Um, and we will be providing a, um, a recorded session of this webinar and also contact information and so we can answer some of your questions directly. Um, this one I'm going to toss out to either you or Jamil. Are the auto layer fiber measurements always made perpendicular to the feature of interest? For example, a diagonal line would yield a greater thickness measurement. How would the software handle a tapered feature? For the fiber thickness, um, yes, it will be perpendicular, so you're not skewing the data results. But how it's actually being done, it's it's um, the technical part of it is the Euclidean distance map, so it's actually finding the skeleton backbone and taking perpendicular measurements to that. So you're assured that you're not skewing it by taking a diagonal. So if your fiber is getting, you know, from thicker to thinner, it will still be taking those measurements perpendicular to it by the tools that are employed underneath. Okay. Right, and then the other thing I can comment on is that you can measure in 3D space. So. Um, Although the area and volume will be dictated by uh, how Jeff described, but if it's just kind of a, a linear measurement, so let's say corner to corner, uh, if it was at 11 o'clock and 5 o'clock, as an example, then simply simply a line measurement through 3D space uh, should suffice. Okay, and is it possible to decode barcodes using ImagePro? That capability is is not currently available in Image Pro. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, often images have annotation. When sending an image to Image Pro, is a plain image sent or annotated with scope info? If scope info is sent, how does IP handle that annotation? Well, uh, if the annotation was made before the image was sent, uh, oftentimes, that's a separate layer in the image, uh, but any image that, uh, that is transferred, let's say, through the integrated button, an IPI button, as we call it, it will still retain the same calibration information, so the annotation will not be affected. Uh, and then if you were to add an annotation in Image Pro, that is definitely a different layer that can uh, or cannot be as part of the image once it's exported or published. Okay. Uh, let's see. Are you using, let's see, are you using the profile line method, for example, is another question. How was that question again? Yeah. Let's see. It says, Oh, I'm sorry. It's a continuation of the barcodes. I apologize. It's just one down. Um, it looks like oh, it's I see. can it yeah. Is it possible to code to decode? Excuse me. Barcodes using Image Pro, using the profile line method, for example. So I guess that one might have been asked and answered. I see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Currently, we're not. Okay. Barcodes of it. That's okay. 
Thank you. Um, is there a process to correlate light microscope images with SEM images with IP? We use IP for light microscopy. There is not a, wanna, there are, or go, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, I was going to say if you were going to take it on, because I know there were some light microscope uh, capability within ImagePro in itself. Um, as far as overlaying, um, maybe maybe you can answer answer that a bit better than I could. There are, there is, there is an alignment tool that the images can be overlaid um, and work together if there are, you would create the fiduciary marks to, to work those together. Um, there is some capability within Image Pro that, that you can overlay um, either bright field or fluorescence image over top of an EM image. Okay. Thank you. Um, in the 3D root movie, is it possible to connect one structure between each section? Uh, yeah, from the from the slicing tank uh, plane, you mean? I, I would think so. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and I think I've got a couple more for you that keep popping up. Uh, do you have local fifty okay. percent threshold implemented for segmentation? And it, it is it. Excuse me. It is the best for SEM based particle measurements. So. Do you have local 50% threshold implemented for segmentation? In the guys that has, the guys that's being asked, no. We again, we, we tend to use honestly, I use machine learning for most everything. Okay. All right. The thresholding is is kind of a it's almost on the order of of segmenting with like the histogram, right? So yes. that's a very simple, straightforward kind of way in order to segment contrast levels. Image Pro actually takes it one step beyond that, uh, as Jeff mentioned in the webinar, where we actually use machine learning in order to extrapolate and identify the object in itself beyond just the contrast levels, which is what thresholding provides. And that uh, helps to uh, define the object a, a lot better to detect, especially when you have multiple images that you want to segment in one single run as a as a uh, automated macro uh, process. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm going to circle back around to that 3D root movie. So when the question was directed, and I believe you addressed it, Jamil, in the 3D root movie, is it possible to connect one structure between each section? so that then one can peel off the entire parts of the structure. I don't know if that helps you yeah, nail down that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you identify uh, the same object within two different slices or two different planes, uh, that can be considered one object that can be segmented or separated from the rest. Uh, we actually have a couple different videos that, that kind of show that. Um, Okay. Well, again, we can yes, certainly get everybody's possible. name and email addresses if they've registered and chose to opt in. So we can certainly contact everybody um, separately afterwards and address your questions and perhaps have supporting materials. Um, can Okay, another question I have for you folks. Can you do 3D measurement on a stereo pair? Uh, no. No, we don't have that capability. Um, let's say we're, we're getting a lot of these barcode questions, folks. Um, <laughs> if, it's on a sample, <laughs> if it's on a sample um, that can be read by a barcode reader rather than entered manually from a keyboard, could it be could it be used? Right. I, uh, I, yeah. Cur currently, our yeah, we'll back. I, we wouldn't address uh, the barcodes. Yeah, it's okay. Right now, we're not, we're not reading barcodes. Okay. Uh, next question: If there is there a specific module for the analysis of gunshot residue (GSR), or can the application of measuring circumferences be used for this analysis? Yeah, circumferences, diameters, volumes, any any kind of uh, circular or semicircular structure can be identified. It is. Mm -hmm. um, for ImagePro, it is a bit more 
on the manual side of things, but as far as Hitachi, there are other solutions that are available for GSR applications. Uh, should you have more of an interest in that, I mean, please feel free to contact us so we can discuss this on a one-to-one -one basis. Okay, perfect. Actually, they included their email and their questions, so that's great. Um, oh, perfect. Great. So it looks like we've handled everything, gentlemen. Again, it was a very interesting and informative webinar. Um, we're able to give people 10 minutes of their time back of their day. Um, thank you all for attending. And again, you will receive a copy of the webinar. And please visit us at m and in our virtual booth. Take care. Thank you. Be safe. Thank you. Thank you.